My name is Cody Ohitika, which means brave one in my father's Lakota Sioux language. I'm not sure how brave I am right now. I'm traveling from Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota to Northwest Washington, where I will be living for the next three months with my uncle and his family on their Indian reservation. It's my first trip away from home. On my 15th birthday, my mother and father thought it best that I learn the ways of the coastal Salish side of my mother's family. My uncle thought it was such a great idea for me to see the Northwest. He agreed to pick me up on his way back from a business trip. As I travel west, I wonder about the people from many winds who've traveled this path before me. Tlaleb, Swinomish, Lummi. The name sounds strange to me, and yet they're a part of me I don't know. What, what was that? What just happened? You got a flat tire. Want to change the tire? Triple A. Triple A? Haven't you ever chased a tire before? Nope. Learn by doing, son. There you go. Nothing to it. Yep. Hey, we better get loaded up. We gotta make it back in time for drum practice. Drum practice? Have you ever seen one of these before? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, I played a different one back home, but yeah, yeah it looks about right. This is how one of our songs go. Think you can handle that? Yeah, no problem. See what you got. Hey, that's good. Oh, thanks. That's good. We better get loaded up. Right. We gotta make us some time. Why don't you hang on to that? I'll load this up. Thanks.
So, Uncle Ray, do you think you could show me another song? Yeah, I got a good one right here. Hey, oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, hey, oh, Uncle Ray, that's smoke on the water. No, it's not. Hey, oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, oh, Uncle Ray, yes, it is. That's, that's smoke on the water. Indian song. Hey, oh, hey, hey, oh, 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 hey, Cody, we're getting ready for our annual canoe journey. It's going to be the biggest event you've ever seen. It's going to be awesome. We could use a drummer and a good voice to help us out. Think you're up to it? Me? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, I used to sing at our powwows back home. You'll like our coastal gatherings. The whole tribe gets involved with it. It's become a tradition. This year, we're hosting tribes as far away as Alaska. It's gonna be a good one. Brothers and sisters, I want to introduce you to my nephew, Cody. He's visiting us from Lakota Sioux country. Hey. He'll be singing with us for the next few months, right? I guess so. <laughs> so you all better behave yourselves, you hear? These are all your relatives. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hey. Hey. Okay, so you can give me a hug, too. Ah, good to see you. Hey there. <laughs> good to see you. I'll be with you in just a second. Come on, boss. Yeah. Oh. Cody, as you get to know me, you know that I joke around a lot. Right. <laughs> uh, it's just my Indian way. But I want you to know that you need to take these songs very serious. They're gifts from our ancestors. They help us remember who we are as tribal people. All right. Good. Let's go. Asiam, dear family, special day today. Got to meet another family member, Cody. Feel it's only right, only proper. Cover him with a blanket. Honor him with a song. Just like the story of the salmon, seems to find its way back home. Kind of a testimony to what the brother has went through to get home. To family, we'll see him. The songs they shared were different from our Lakota songs. Yet at the same time, 
familiar. Each song has a purpose, whether it's honor, remembrance, or celebration. Each has meaning. Cody, how was that for your first coastal experience? It was pretty cool. You're a good singer. You did good. I'm proud of you. You know, tonight, when you sleep, you hear the songs and see the dancers in your dreams. Yeah. Hey, Uncle Ray. What just happened back there? I felt something. Something strong passed through me, like a, like a cold shiver or something, like, like... Like the power of the spirit. There's a lot of power in our ancestors, and power in the Sladao songs, our spirit songs. Well, I definitely felt something. Hey, what is this something you're talking about? What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, where do you feel it? Oh, um, right, right here. Yeah, like right around here. As if it spoke to me. Right here? Yeah. You want to know what it means? My grandpa, he told me, he said, we got to take the time to listen. If we take the time to listen, we'll get to know the meaning. What it means is, I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I better get you over to your Aunt Fran's house before you wither away and disappear. Uh -huh. <laughs> Come on, I know where the best smoked salmon in the whole world is. Where? At home. <laughs> Sunshine. Yeah, I thought you were sunshine. <laughs> Not you. I was talking to your friend. Oh, Cody, you better take a seat so we can uh, get you some breakfast and uh, get you ready for school. School? But it's summertime. I, I thought I was on vacation. It's not my idea. It's your Aunt Fran's idea. Besides, I let your Aunt Fran think she's in charge here mm -hmm. only because she's just so good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, you better be talking about summer school yeah. to Cody. There you go, Cody. Cody, this is a Northwest Environmental Studies class. I just thought it would be a good idea for you to learn about our science. Yeah, just what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Summer school. Ray. Come on, Aunt Fran, it's summer. Just give it a try. If you don't like it, you don't have to keep going. But I'd at least like you to check it out. Come on, Uncle Ray, help me out here. Hey, don't look at me. It's your Aunt Fran who wants you to go to summer school. It's her idea. Ray, that... back me up on this, or I'm going to send you to summer school. You could learn a thing or two. Yeah, Uncle Ray. It'll <laughs> be good class. You'll learn a lot. Besides, how do you say no to this? I guess I could check it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, uh, what would you like for breakfast? Um, do you have any of that salmon from last night? Salmon, uh, let me check. Ah, yes we do. Uncle Ray didn't eat it all. All right. All right. It turned out that my Aunt Fran is one of the kindest and gentlest people I have ever met. Right from the beginning, she took me under her wing and made me feel as if I had been a part of her family all my life. As she drove me to the school, I noticed she had a look of concern. What's the matter, my friend? Well, nothing really. Well, actually, I know you'll be fine. 
Just remember, Cody, it's important to learn how to walk in both worlds. I know you'll be fine. Don't worry, I will. I recognized her concern. I'd seen the same look on my parents' eyes whenever I went off the reservation back home. Sometimes people who don't know us don't seem to understand us or even give us a chance to be ourselves. It's like they're afraid of us, even though there's no reason to be. It's not always easy to be an Indian and fit into a non-Indian society too, but it is important to do both. That's what they call walking in two worlds. Welcome to our summer school. This is climate change and the environment. We're going to have a busy summer. We'll learn a lot of new, uh, well, we have a new student. Uh, welcome, and um, this is biology. I understand you're Cody Yohitika, is that correct? Yeah. Have a seat with uh, Shawnee, and we'll, we'll get started here. Now, I, you come from a family of uh, Coast Salish Indian and Lakota Sioux, is that correct? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, as we uh, get started here, I want all of you to pay attention. I want all of you to hear this, because this is one of the most important things you're going to learn about in your lifetime. And we're talking about a healthy um, environment. And uh, what, what we need to discover, what we need to talk about is the things that affect the food that you eat, uh, the air that you breathe, and the water that you drink, and how that will affect you throughout the rest of your lives. So, okay, class, any thoughts about climate change or pollution on how it affects the world you live in? Addison, global warming, what do you think uh, affects the things around you? Well, I've heard our glaciers are melting. Thank you, and that's a very good response. The glaciers are melting, you're right. And in fact, in the mountains around us, we're, we've already lost about 25% of our glaciers. Any other thoughts about how this is affecting you? Yes, Shawnee. It's wiping out our salmon. Yes, I'm afraid so. Our rivers run low in the summer and the water's too warm for fish. From global change, what, what's occurring is that even though we see slight changes in our atmospheric conditions on the ground from population growth and land use, we see uh, much larger changes, changes that affect the flows in the river and uh, affect the temperature. As these things change, it harms the fish, causes a depletion, and, and creates a situation that uh, doesn't allow for the regeneration. As we also look at the marine waters down below the river, we're seeing pollution problems from land use runoff that's affecting the salmon and even the orca, the killer whale. This is something that we can't, we can't hide from. The environment is important to you. So we want you to, to look at how this will affect you. And I think maybe to start out with, we can have uh, Cody and, and Shawnee pair up together to talk about doing a, a video or a story that we can tell. And in fact, class, all of you will be pairing up and, and looking at what kind of uh, product you can produce here to look at the, the problems that we're facing and find solutions. I want you to listen to the words of the elder. It will help you understand who we are, who, who you are. Yeah, but... What's he saying? We are people of the salmon. Before the beginning of time, a close Salish people lived on these waters. We lived in the forest. The sacred cedar tree gave to us so that we could build our houses, our nets, our canoes. We carved the canoes and shaped them out of our own hands so that they would carry our children safely. The spirit of the cedar still lives in them. We respect and honor this land, 
these waters, jam, all life that is sustained by the sun, the wind, the circle of life. Everything is connected together. The salmon is the measuring stick of our health and well-being. The fate of the salmon is the fate of the people. Cody, this is the reason why we celebrate the salmon. This is why we journey in our canoes. And as we journey, we carry with us in our hearts the spirit of our ancestors. The respect, the honor, and the love of our friends and families at home. These teachings are just reminders of who we were in the past, who we are now, and who we want to be into the future. The wisdom is already in you. It's in all of us. We just need to take the time to listen. Wait for me over there. I need to go acknowledge our elder. Think about what you just heard today. All right. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you for your words. Mm-hmm. I was wondering if I could get your thoughts on this new song that we're singing. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's hear it. Hey, Cody. I don't believe we've been formally introduced. I'm Shawnee. You want to sit next to me in the shadow? The shadow? It's the name of our canal. Is that okay? I mean, like, I, I don't know if I, if, if I should it's do It's fine. That. The only problem is I'm pretty strong. See? Oh, <laughs> look out. <laughs> look, I think I can out paddle a girl. I mean, I am a prairie Indian buffalo hunter. Right. Hey, listen. It's pretty important to be safety conscious in these canoes. If you respect them, they can take you hundreds of miles. If you don't, they can take your life like that. You mean they can tip over? Nah, it almost never happens. Wait, what do you mean almost never happens? Listen, you can swim, right? Oh yeah, sure. Kinda. <laughs> I can dog paddle. Well, listen, dog paddler. You might want to stick close to me. Now, come on, let's go paddle. It's tradition for canoe families to ask an elder's permission to go out onto the water, as well as permission to come ashore when they return. Tradition, as well as the songs they sing, gives the family strength with each stroke. Yeah, we got good numbers here, too. Hey, Cody, gonna get wet today or what? Yeah, Buffalo Hunter. Can't you keep up with the girls? All right, all right. This is pretty cool. So what are we doing here, Uncle Ray? We're testing the water for quality, depth, and the flow of the river. We have to have clean water so the salmon have a good home to come back to. Bad water means no salmon. Well, that's no good at all, because I like eating salmon. We all do. The runs aren't what they used to be. What do you mean? Well, there's many reasons. Too many people, 
too much pollution like sewage, oil spills, dams. There are some developers who try and keep the ecosystem in mind, but there are others who just don't understand the impact they have on our environment. But Cody, sometimes greed can wipe out a habitat like there's no tomorrow. For a salmon, that just might be true. But don't the treaties protect them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. They're supposed to. But when the federal government treaties promised there'd be salmon to catch forever, as long as the rivers run, the tribes work hard to protect the salmon. But sometimes, Cody, seems like we're the only ones who really care. It's been a huge challenge. But we'll never give up. Nope, we'll never give up. We need clean water, a healthy environment. We need the salmon, and the salmon need us. And I hope people begin to understand that. Otherwise, we're sunk! Hey, <laughs> speaking about sunk, do you remember that story that Grandpa used to tell Grandma all the time? At the short time, I took your Grandma. Fran, from the... right. somebody spilled oil in the river, up river. Oil? Let's get up to the hatchery. Let's go. Wait. Give me a hand. You and Shawnee stay here. Let us know when you see anything in the river. Uh, okay. Who would jump oil in the river? I don't. I don't know. I'm going to shut off the valve. I'm on the south pond. I'll get the well pump. Great. Contact the North Hatchery. We may need to move our fish. situation here. We need to get the oil out of the river before it gets to the bay. I'll contact tribal council. Great, you get the oil response team. Let's go. Northwest tribes raise millions of salmon in their hatcheries every year. Hatcheries were supposed to help make up for the impact of dams and other habitat destructive practices sanctioned by the non-tribal governments. And Fran says the tribes would rather have the river as it once was, free flowing, wild and pure. But without hatcheries, there would be no fish. But when a fly-by night operator decides it's easier to dump used oil into the river rather than recycle it, it ruins the river, our creeks, even the bay, everything, just as other forms of pollution do. In the days that followed, it seemed like the entire tribe got involved in the cleanup effort. Containment booms had been set in the bay in an effort to control the oil spill as it washed out into the Puget Sound. Oil was soaked up and birds and other wildlife were treated for oil saturation. Many died. The impact from this one incident was far from over. Our people and Brother Salmon has taken a great loss. We see the poisons every day out here. We see the greed every day. We see the waste of water, our resource. We see our earth dying slow death. We see our earth dying. And that's why we're sitting in this great longhouse today to make some prayers come true and to talk about our culture and our way of life for our children and our children that are not even born yet. We've got to be healthy, and I'm worried about our health, about our people's health. They gotta have salmon to sustain them. They gotta have their animals to sustain them. They gotta have their roots to sustain them. They gotta have their berries, their medicines. We're in a house, our long house is medicine to us. And we're gonna be here. And we're gonna fight every day for the life of our salmon and our animals, our birds and our eagles, our way of life. 
That's why we have these ceremonies that is going on this weekend. That's why we're allowed to come into this longhouse and talk and make our prayers. And you all have to be the messenger now. All of us together. We don't have enough of us that takes these messages forward so we can sustain our lives, not only for us Indian people, but for everybody. Our children, our grandchildren, for the next hundred generations out there. And we're gonna do this. We're gonna do it together, all of us. He's out like a light. Oh, thanks, Ray. Mm. How are you doing? Oh, I'm exhausted. Hey, Franny. You did good. I'm proud of you. Thanks for being by my side, Ray. Mm. Let's go to bed. We got a long day tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh. Hey, Cody, you gonna sleep all day or what? Wake up. Aren't you guys tired? How are you so up? There's no time to be tired. The canoes are coming in. Canoes? What canoes? Canoes? Lummi Nation is welcoming Macaw, Quinault, Tulalip Tribes, Suquamish, uh, Squamish Nation. Oh yeah, you'll be able to meet your Canadian relatives. Plus there's a representative from the Lakota Nation there. What? You. you. Oh, okay, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. Just, just don't leave without me. Hey, I'll cook you a big breakfast. Come on. Let's All go. Right. Okay. It was a day I will always remember. More than a hundred canoes came. Some from tribes just across the water, some from hundreds of miles away traveling on water routes that proceeded roads and highways anywhere in the world. Men, women, and children came. Fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, and cousins. They came with smiles, respect, and laughter. They came with words of peace and stories to share, gifts to give, and tears of happiness. These were canoe nations, salmon nations. They braved the tides, the winds, and the currents. And with each arriving canoe, they breathed new life into the legacies that time had not forgotten. These were people who walked in two worlds. On other days, they drove cars or flew in airplanes, worked in hospitals or lectured at universities. But all you had to do was open your eyes to them to see that their hearts remained connected with an ancestry that had always been here. Their vision and wisdom had survived and grown despite all the hardships they had endured. Their respect for the land, the sky and the waters had continued to be strong in the face of modern growth and change. This was a happy day, a day to restore strength from the days before. I hope for the sake of the Indians and non-Indians that there will be many days like this in years to come. Coastal tribes celebrate in many ways the first salmon ceremony. It is a long-held tribal custom showing respect for the salmon. The symbolic first salmon of the season is prepared for everyone to enjoy. 
each in their own way, acknowledging its importance to nutrition, tradition, and prosperity. The remains of the salmon are then placed on a bed of cedar boughs and returned to the water from which it came. Tribal legend teaches us that the salmon changes back to his original human form and swims to the village of the salmon people under the sea. After he returns to his village, he tells how he was treated. If he tells his people he was treated with great respect, many of them convert to salmon form, swim in large numbers to the fishing grounds, and there is a good harvest. Whether or not you believe these things actually happen isn't important, but tribal stories teach us something very important. Respect. It's very important to respect the salmon and the habitat that sustains them. Because when you do, you respect yourself. Long ago, our stories tell us people took things for granted. They didn't respect Salmon Woman's gift, her children. Salmon Woman was so upset, she told her children not to return to the rivers, and people began to starve and became sick. Many died. When Salmon Woman returned, she promised all the people that if they cherished and respected the land and the water, the salmon would always return. This lesson was passed down to generation after generation, so the salmon would never be taken for granted again. How long the salmon swim here is a question you must help us answer, no matter where you live. Ready to go? I think so. We had a good summer, eh? Yeah, I had fun. Think you're coming back? Think you'll have any salmon? Oh, let me see here. Oh, yeah. I think I'll be back. Hey, Buffalo Hunter. Got a few things for you. Oh, hey. My auntie gave this paddle to me. You can practice at home. <laughs> you need it. Maybe when you get back, you can be on the team. Wow. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> Your Uncle Ray and I have a gift for you as well. You know, it's our traditional way to cover those who we love with a blanket. So we have a special blanket here for you. This blanket is of the salmon people of your ancestors. You've always been part of them. Thanks. This means a lot. We're proud of you, Cody. You opened up your heart, you opened up your mind. You became part of our family, not just by name, but by experiencing our culture here. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you too. Give your nephew a hug. <laughs> On that note, let's hit the road. All right. All right, Cody, you come back soon and you see us again. All right. Uncle Ray, don't you be swerving all over the road. Oh, don't worry about us. Aishka. to bring you up here before we left. I come up here often just to pay my respects. Just to come up here to be. When I come up here, it gives me a sense of strength. You're never alone. Your ancestors are with you wherever you go. Everything that your ancestors did was so that you can be here 
right now. You're never alone. Just know that. Young Korea, being here and seeing all this, I think I'm starting to understand. I think I understand the importance of the salmon and the salmon woman stories. And I think I understand the spirit of the salmon. I get it. Yes, you do. Let's get you home. Hey, Cody, you're going to teach me how to be that mighty prairie buffalo hunter? Well, Uncle Ray, I learned by doing. I've learned many things this summer. One of the most important is that we all have choices in this world. Each one of us can make a difference. And it's our responsibility to make wise choices, not only for ourselves, but for others. My name is Cody Ohitika, which means brave one in my father's Lakota Sioux language. Now, I am also known as Siab Ayamik, or friend of the salmon by my coastal Salish family. I've also learned something else. I will be back.